Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And wow, does this caught me a pleasant surprise. Because I finally got to see an awesome action picture that was set in a first person's perspective. And sad to say, it was a box office bomb. It came out on April 8th of this year at quite a few selected feeders nationwide. But it was only there for like a few weeks until it quietly disappeared. Lucky for me, I actually had a chance to see the movie at a local dollar feeder. So at least now I finally had a chance to, to finally go inside and sit on a comfortable seat, already getting my adrenaline pumping. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the new movie. Hardcore Henry, which is also known as simply Hardcore. That was an independent action picture that's done in Russia by a Russian singer and who actually has his own band called Biting Elbows. Yeah, very uh, strange name for a band. But hey, we got the Flaming Lips uh, here and all these other strange band names uh, outside. So yeah, <laughs> it was by a name called, but it's by a man named Elsa Nussholer, who's also the producer, writer, and director. Yeah, this is his screen debut. He's also the star as well. Played some other characters. And this is also the first film to actually have a first person's perspective that plays out like a first-person shooter. Yeah, because this is definitely a tribute to first-person shooter video games. And trust me on this one, I used to play those games uh, back in the day when I used to love to play video games. You know, I always play games like GoldenEye, you know, Halo, and as well as Perfect Dark. You, know, you name it. <laughs> it. Does take you back to those times, but nowadays uh, I hardly ever play any video games. In fact, the movie was actually shot using GoPro cameras, such as the GoPro Hero 3, that's especially made for the film by using um, lots of stuntmen to actually play the role of Henry, where apparently all the stunt guys had started getting neck injuries while you know, trying to do incredible stunts that this movie had. And they also have some awesome, uh, beautifully shots of uh, of all the the guns and ammo that uh, the character had used. You know, there's some violent shootouts that you have in the film. Everything. So there you go. <laughs> but that's exactly what this movie is all about. Basically, it's just your typical story about about one guy. Who has a wife who sadly has been kidnapped by an evil, by an evil man who has uh, telekinesis powers, who just takes over the entire world and and just hires a bunch of mercenaries to go after him, you know, with the help of of one man who's actually in disguise to to actually help him stop the guy before it's too late. So that's what the story is about, and I really enjoy that that aspect. Yeah. <laughs> apparently um, Eli ex apparently Iya actually wanted to um, do this movie for a very long time after he started doing two music videos from his band Biting Elbows. So he thought, well why not? This should work. Mostly because um, I bet this guy loves to play first person shooter games so he thought this would be a good idea for a movie so they could be shot uh, so that way it could be shown on the big screen with thousands of people yeah. it did make a success in Russia but here you know it, it only you know out of its two million budget that this movie had um, apparently the distributor STX Entertainment uh, along with uh, 
H. Brothers had paid $10 million in profit to, to market at this film. But unfortunately, you know, they, they didn't get a chance because the film you know, didn't do so well. And hard to believe because this is the same company that actually was a distributor and, market, and marketed a, a horror film that was horrible completely. And that movie made money. And, of course, that's called The Boy. Yeah, that's such a ridiculous movie that this movie can kick ass really hard. And it's so much better than this piece of shit, uh, The Boy. So that's what happened. And plus, this movie had a great cast. I mean, you got Charteau Copley, you know, who's been best known for his role in District 9. And I know he's been in some several movies, most of which are not good, like last year's Chappie and, and of course, Maleficent. I mean, come on, they should give this guy a break. He's really a very talented actor. And hopefully he'll do some more in the future. And I'm glad he is doing it. But I have to say, he definitely uh, <laughs> stole the show for me. Mostly when he played the role as Jimmy. So anyway, let's get to the film. It stars Shalto Copley, Daniela Kowalski, Haley Bennett, and Tim Roth. And it's written and directed by Ilya Nasholler. The movie begins set in the first person's perspective, of course. A young man named Henry who's being awakened from a water tank inside a laboratory that's located on an airship. We meet a beautiful scientist named Estelle who's played by Haley Bennett who also claims to be Henry's wife of course. Has been revived from an accident that's left him with a short term memory loss and he can't speak. So she decided to use high tech cybernetic prosthetics to fix him replacing his missing arm and leg so that way he'll be able to move functionally and become more unique and better than ever as a person. Yeah so I guess Ayad Nas Holler actually watched Robocop. Yeah I'm talking about the 1987 film of course. Yeah the original not that crummy 2014 remake which really sucks. Yeah, where they have a team of scientists who revive a cop named Alex Murphy from being shot down by a gang of criminals that's led by Bob Decker. Yeah, where he actually has his arm being blown off and his leg as well, so until he got shot in the head and was being revived by using cyber technology in order for him to become a cyborg named Robocop. <laughs> so there you go. That's a perfect intro right there. <laughs> also, Henry had remembered during his childhood days that he was being beaten up by a gang of bullies. And his father, who's played by Tim Roth, he yeah, has no name, of course, just called them You Little Pussy. Had told him to actually stand up against them so that way he won't be bullying anymore. And that's for sure. There's a lesson right there, folks. So things were going pretty well for Henry until all of a sudden a group of mercenaries that's led by a crazy man with telekinesis powers, Akon, who's played by Danila Kowalski, had took over the entire ship, claiming that all of Estelle's research is part of his property. So he kills Estelle's fellow scientists before his attempt to murder Henry. So both Henry and Estelle have fleed inside an escape pod and landed all the way straight down into a highway that's located in Moscow, Russia, just before Estelle was being abducted and kidnapped by all the mercenaries. And of course, they dump Henry out of the side of the road and landed into the pavement where you know, he's being... Um, shut down for a while and it was awakened again to hide against the mercenaries and started to go after them until he was being rescued by a mysterious man named Jimmy who's played by Charteau Copley who actually informs him that his cybernetic implants are running out of power so in order for him to, to keep a recharge in order for him not to die he went inside Jimmy's car 
Inside the club department, there is a rechargeable battery. It even says the word Henry on there. So that way he'll be recharged 100%. And Jimmy was about to give him some information about what's going on. And he was also introducing himself, too. Before a bunch of corrupt cops, owned by Akon, of course, had attacked Jimmy and Henry. You know, he shot him down and then... Henry escapes in a foot chase all the way throughout the entire city and went all the way down into the subway, you know, so that way he can hide against those corrupt cops. And then <laughs> he beats the shit out of them and shot him down completely, you know, using all the weapons that he has. And then he hides inside the bus where he meets an alcoholic bum, which turned out to be disguised by Jimmy who told him that um, he has a tracking device inside his arm so he uses the priors to take it out and gives some information that that one of Akon's associates Slick Dimitri has a cybernetic charging pump that's implanted inside his heart so that way he can use that heart to put it inside his body so he can become fully recharged but shortly thereafter, Henry and Jimmy are being attacked by a crazy flame-throwing guy who's just just ready to burn uh, Jimmy because he's already in flames. And Henry was just about to go after him by shooting him down. And he's being chased once again by trying to go all the way to Dimitri's complex to grab um, the heart before he receives a message from Akon. So Henry decided to chase Dimitri down until a sniper had shot him in, in the head. And yeah, his head explodes and then he later receives a call from Jimmy who suddenly was uh, located inside a strip club. Yeah, because he's once again disguised as a... Uh, <laughs> like a, basically a, uh, a womanizer or drug dealer or any kind uh, or so well not really a drug dealer but he's just he's just uh, <laughs> a crazy man who's just horny and he's just giving him some more information and, and, and focus on his next mission to go after Akon and his mercenaries before they all came inside the room and, and there was a violent shootout against them and of course, we get to see more Jimmy, you know, as <laughs> basically an awkward man, and then and then a cocaine addicted uh, guy, and, and then also <laughs> you know also a, a hippie biker too, you know, smokes marijuana. Yeah, I guess what what Henry doesn't know is that it turns out, and this is a spoiler. So here's a surprise. There's only one spoiler, but that's okay. Was that Jimmy was actually created by himself. He's, he was an inventor and a scientist that he created all of his versions of himself just so he can help Henry. Get, get rid of all the mercenaries and Akon from kidnapping his wife, um, Estelle. So... Basically, that's what the film is all about, you know. And it was a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had a present surprise and had a great time. It's just sad that this movie didn't do so well at the box office. And I wish it had more of the attention it deserves. But I know it will once it hits home video. You know, on Blu-ray and DVD. And digital copy, of course. <laughs> So we'll get to see some more extras that were left out and and all this other good stuff that we had for the movie. So it'll be perfect. Yeah, because this movie had incredible stunts. This movie was shot uh, with the GoPro Hero 3. So I could tell because they use a lot of stunt doubles to play Her Henry. To play Henry. Even though they all got uh, severe neck injury. <laughs> having to play the role mostly because they've been falling down you know you know having to wear the the GoPro hero you know, on their heads and 
or their necks perhaps and they're just doing all these uh, shots of him you know just using lots of gun and ammo you know throwing all these bad guys around and and shooting in a very beautiful breathtaking scene all the way around that plays exactly like a first person shooter game so it was like wow <laughs> you're, you're just right there but I, I'm glad that I didn't get sick you know having to sit through the the entire film because now I can see why people do get motion sickness while watching this on the big screen yeah because it happens to found footage movies and all these other films that have shaky camera elements yeah especially the ones that Oliver Stone has been writing and directing you know, during the later years or so yeah like that awful National Board Killers movie yeah remember that film <sighs> such a bunch of seizure inducing uh, shaky cams that just got me completely sick and yes it has non-stop over-the-top violence in that film too and this movie was over the top with a bunch of uh, ultra violence that they went into it so it so I'm glad they, they go for that route you know, even though yeah it does get to you sometimes but I saw the whole film all the way for its running time and I almost got a little nauseous, but luckily I didn't, thank God, so I watched the whole thing. And it, was, it got me up to, it just got my adrenaline pumping in the edge of my seat. So it was perfect. Now, the movie does have a few problems, but that's okay, because most action films do. However, I had to admit, I wasn't very fond by the ending of the movie, but you know because I feel like it was just so predictable that you never know what's gonna happen next like you know during the final showdown so it's best not to mention it because I think for those who have seen the movie I, I think everybody will felt exactly the same way however I did hear that there was another ending to the movie and it might be pretty much uh, the original ending that that should have been left in and I hope that we get to see that uh, later on the Blu-ray release. It's hard to believe that a studio uh, Styx Entertainment or STX uh, along with H Brothers uh, had released this movie they they paid 10 million budget uh, they paid 10 million they paid 10 million dollars um, for the marketing and the distribution out of its two million budget for this movie that it receives. It was actually um, a huge success in Russia. It did actually very well over there and has a positive feedback. Well, here in the U.S., it just has a, a mixed reaction from critics. Yeah, it was sad to say it only has a 48 percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, it deserves better than that. And also. This is the same studio that released The Boy, a terrible horror film, and that makes more money than Harcourt Henry. That really sucks. You wouldn't believe that, but it's true. Yeah, no wonder, man. Anyway, back to the movie. I love the cast. Um, the characters... Um, that was Jimmy that was played by Chateau Copley definitely stole the show for me I mean he was just hilarious I thought he worked so well for this movie that he was there to help uh, Henry out and he's definitely the perfect choice to be his partner in fact I love the moments uh, in the movie too where when they went inside the lab because that's where we found out the secret behind this that Jimmy can actually control all of the Jimmys that he created so you get to see him in disguise you know you have one that's that's disguised using all the camouflages as a soldier another one as uh, <laughs> as uh, the leader another one um, as uh, <laughs> a dancer you know wearing a a big a big uh, black top well, and all, all, every single uh, Jimmy's out there has like tons of personalities that you can see. 
that just works so well. I, I thought, wow, I never thought I would see so many Jimmies <laughs> in one movie. <laughs> that was fun. And, and it worked, too. I, I loved that. Um, I mean, definitely terrific chemistry uh, between him and Henry. Even though Henry can't speak and... I mean, he does move around, you know, nods his head, and and he just uses all the gun and ammo that he needs to, to survive from being the, shot by all these mercenaries and Akon, who's being, you know, who, who just uses his um, telekinesis powers to control them and control everybody's minds and, and throw them all the way around the entire room. And by the way, um, actor Daniela Kowalski um, did a very good job portraying as uh, Akon, who not only owns uh, the system, but also the fact that he's sort of a cross between, <laughs> get this, he talks more like Tommy Rousseau in the room, Yeah, he also you know, acts like him as well. Not only that, but he also looks a little bit like Brad Dorff, yeah, because of those facial expressions he makes. He even looks like him too, yeah, with that hair and and those blue eyes too. Yeah, it's, so it seems like a cross between Tom Rousseau and and Brad Dorff, because yeah, Brad Dorff has been known for playing villains, and I feel like wow. I can't believe, you know, this is the kind of villain who could definitely be over the top with the minutes. But he's he's very strong, you know, using all these powers that he can do. Yeah. Wow, I couldn't believe it. Also, Haley Bennett, who played the the beautiful and yet she is very hot and sexy as the scientist uh, who happens to be his wife, supposedly. Um uh, Estelle, I mean, oh man, she was just, I couldn't believe it, she was so hot in the movie, it really worked, uh, they definitely have terrific chemistry between two as well, they really spark, I mean, as his love, yeah, Estelle, as his love, int as his love interest, uh, Estelle, I mean, she was incredibly hot, and sexy, and beautiful, they really connect with each other, and basically, I wish we could see more of them together. <laughs> I really do. And hopefully we get to see that um, uh, on the Blu-ray if it comes out. You know, with all the extras and all that. So, it was just, it was fun. I, I really love this movie. Um, I'm definitely going to give this, um, this movie the top of my best list. And there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm definitely going to get this movie when it comes. Hopefully, because um, I had a good time. I really love it. So anyway, I give Hardcore Henry five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.